Hello everyone, I'm Pauline and today we'll tell you about our work and how to make the execution of function block diagrams less ambiguous using IC 64099 standard. So first I will briefly remind you what function block diagram is. Basically it consists of function blocks uh, which transform, which infer the value of uh, the output variables based on the input variables, values, and their internal structure. Um, they differ in their internal structure, so there can ex there exist basic blocks, which are atomic blocks, and they have undividable logic, which can be implemented, for example, in structured text or in other programming language, and uh, composite blocks, which uh, comprised uh, of interconnected blocks of any type, composite or basic, but these nested structures are finite, so in the end every composite block can be decomposed into the net of basic blocks. So in this picture we can see big one big com composite blocks, which can consist of uh, composite blocks and which in turn can be uh, are decomposed into nets of basic blocks. Uh, so how those are those function block diagrams are executed? There exists general rule that uh, an output variable value can be updated only when it's uh, when the input variables values of a function blocks of, the, of a function block are updated. Um, so this can be implemented differently in different standards. For example, in 6.7.31.3 uh, standard, the uh, function block diagrams, they executed uh, from top to bottom and from left to right. Well, first from left to right and then from top to bottom. And uh, you might remember it from code C's like first uh, like those, how those networks are executed. However, this requires from an engineer an additional thought on how to place those function blocks in those networks in order for them to be executed correctly. And this process is quite error prone because uh, even if the blocks are not placed correctly, they can be executed and uh, the and such execution may result in non-obvious mistakes. So basically at some point, maybe not even uh, from the beginning, there will be a mistake and it will be very difficult to find. And in the end, it will be, uh, it will lie in the execution order. Also, what about loopbacks? So for example, if we have blocks with memory, uh, which uh, output values depend on the previous values, so in input or output of this block. So when should this block be executed? Um, and how should it be placed in those networks? And it's also a question. And our main uh, motivation for this work was in safety critical systems, because the less um, an ambiguity there in, less ambiguity there uh, in the safety critical systems like nuclear power plants, um, the more reliable those systems are. And uh, for example, on this slide, I have a semi fictional diagram of a protection system of a European pressurized reactor. And uh, well, it's guessable what should, should be executed afterward. But then remember that all those blocks, every every block here is a composite block and almost every of them uh, contains uh, loopback logic inside. So, uh, and so it's really difficult to determine when those blocks should be executed in the logic of 6.7.31.3. And um, we propose uh, modeling those systems in standard 6.14.99, and I will explain why. So consider uh, both blocks uh, 6.7.31.3 and 6.14.99. So first block, uh, as I said, inputs, outputs, when inputs are updated, uh, outputs are updated. Now let's see what we have in 6.14.99 block. We have additional 
input and output variables, which are called event variables. To these variables, we have connected input variables and connected output variables. So how does it work? When uh, the event is triggered, the values of the corresponding variable of the variables that connected to this event are updated. Also, um, internally, this block is a state machine, so some transitions are executed, and uh, in the end, some events are emitted. When the event is emitted, then the variables that are connected to this event are also updated. What does it give, you, give us? So first, uh, here we have an explicit execution logic. So if we place block here and connect those events, then we can be sure that this block will be executed or the particular function of this block will be executed exactly when this event uh, will be emitted, like of the previous block, right? Uh, so this give us some visual explicity in the programming of the execution order. So there, is, there are no guesses where to place the block. You just place it uh, before the block. Uh, you, uh, the engineer places it before the block. Uh, he or she wants it to be executed before. So yes, those event variables are the key entities into our unambiguous execution strategy. But there are many, many systems that are already implemented in this 6731 uh, three standard or just suspension block diagrams. And we need to transform them somehow to 61499. Uh, uh, so how do we do this? Exit, we determine the topological ordering. So we um, build this execution graph where nodes of function blocks and edges are inferred based on that data connections. Then we remove the loops from this graph um, and uh, infer the order of the blocks to be executed. There can be uh, several possible topological orders, which is fine. So for example, for this graph, uh, there are also several other topological orders. Um, and then, based on this order, we create our system. What do, how do we map our function blocks? Um, so we having the function block is 6.11.31.3. We create a function, a function block in 6.14.99 with the same data inputs and outputs, but we add additional init and rec uh, event inputs and init O and CNF even outputs, which are all connected to all the variables input and output. Um, internal structure of a basic block uh, in 61131 is mapped uh, as it shows in the picture. So here we see that uh, for each basic block, we have the state machine, which can consist of uh, these kind of states. Um, in this init state, we initialize variables uh, that do not have uh, values on the first cycle because it's a loopback. It's a block that contains a loopback, so it's memory variable and should be initialized here. And then, after such variables are initialized, we proceed to the operational state. So whenever rec event rec is uh, triggered, we um, execute an algorithm rec, which essentially contains uh, a body, the body of the function block, uh, of our source function block. And we emit also event CNF, which keeps the right to the next block to be executed. And this event init O also gives the right to the next block to be initialized. Our case study, we have actually several case studies. We um, converted that EPR logic, but uh, it's far too big to be presented here. So we uh, present a smaller example. Uh, this was some counter uh, with loopbacks uh, with not 
and you can see. Um, so it consists of two basic blocks, one composite block, and then we convert it to the 64099 in NXT Studio and opened it in, in NXT Studio. Uh, so you can see that now we can determine for sure when uh, each block is executed. Also pay attention that we included this not function block because in uh, NXT Studio we don't have means to um, implement this kind of uh, negation. So yes, this is our result. And it also contains the state loopbacks. Um, but uh, it's very easy to determine when each block is executed. And uh, it's very difficult to make a mistake um, in this kind of uh, logic. Of course, we need to test uh, our system if our systems are equivalent regarding how they work. So we implemented this testing with random sequences. It's also easy to implement the testing graph. So for example, being in some system state, we execute all the sequences, all the possible sequences of input, of inputs, well, not sequences, but combinations of inputs. So here, for example, in my imaginary system, I have two Boolean inputs. So um, I execute uh, false, false, true, false, false, true, and true, true. Um, I cure at some other system states. And again, I will execute all those uh, input combinations. Also, there is an interesting pos uh, possibility to verification because uh, there exists a tool of V2SMV and we get the system where, which can convert the system in 64099 to SMV model. Then we can formulate a set of properties and uh, verify those properties in the system in the new SMV verifier. So it will be not just uh, testing, not just conventional testing, but already verification, some verification possibilities, which is which also increases uh, the system safety in the end. So this is what we did. Uh, we tackled this issue of ambiguous execution of function block diagram. And uh, in this work, we considered especially 611.31.3 diagrams. So we proved that our diagrams are uh, more determined in terms of execution logic and uh, less mistakes can be done in there. Mm. Also, we carried out two case studies, one big uh, to see if we can cover big systems and one small one and one small. However, including all the mm, necessary functionality to test, so, for example, those composite blocks, basic blocks, loopbacks. And uh, we tested it with our, we tested those uh, result systems uh, uh, with our automatic testing tool. So, basically, we were sending random sequences for both of the systems, source uh, and the result, and the result. And we were comparing their outputs after execution of those input combinations. Um, as, a, as for the plans for our future work, um, we can work further on this execution order verification. So for example, to test if indeed, <clears throat> because um, those systems, they still can be big and uh, it uh, can be, difficult to see what executes after what, so we can verify this execution order. And uh, also we can uh, detect those situations of even overflows in 64099 diagrams. Uh, with this, I conclude. Thank you for the attention. Should you have any questions, I'm ready to answer them.